Hello, welcome once again to this class. And in today's class, we'll be talking about resources of Nigeria. So let's um, look at what we have in the menu for resources of Nigeria. So in today's class, we'll be looking at the you know, identification and classification of the different resources that we have in Nigeria. And we we'll also look at the location of where these resources can be found on the map of Nigeria. And then we explain the importance of these resources to Nigeria. So what is a resource or what are resources? Now resources, you know, they refer to the various natural thing or materials found in our environment, which can be used by man which can be used by plants and also which can be used by animals to satisfy their needs. So anything we have in our, in our environment that is, of, that is of benefits to humans like us, that is of benefits to plants and also of benefits to animals, we call such a what? A resource. Is that clear? Now let's um, look at the types of resources we have in Nigeria. What are the types of resources? Now, in Nigeria, you know, we have different, you know, resources available. That's because um, Nigeria is a country that is rich in what, in resources. We have abundant resource, you know, found in this country. So the, the, the types of uh, resources that you can find include um, mineral resources, power resources, solar energy, water, you know, resources, vegetation water resources. So these are the, you know, various uh, resources that, you know, that Nigeria is blessed with. So um, we, let's look at um, Nigeria. Let's look at the map of Nigeria. Now, as you can see, this is a what, this is a map of Nigeria showing um, the various um, resources especially mineral water resources that we have in the country. So what this map entails is that in Nigeria we have things like tin, we have things like iron ore, we have things like limestone, we have things like gold, we have things like um, bauxite, columbite, we have lead and um, zinc, you know, and we have other um, non-mineral resources that is available in what? In Nigeria. So as you go all over the 36 states in Nigeria, you realize that all of these mineral resources and non-mineral resources can be what? Can be found in Nigeria. So let's start with the first um, type of resource, which is the mineral resource. Now, um, these um, mineral resources that are found in Nigeria, you know, currently we have them in Nigeria and um, they can be mined, you know, via different um, means or via different procedures. So we start with the first uh, mineral resource we have in Nigeria, which is the petroleum or crude oil and also the natural water, natural gas. So we have um, petroleum and um, natural gas, you know, abundant in the southern part of Nigeria. We have it in places like Port Harcourt, we have it in places like Wari, we have it in places like Akwaibu, we have it in Imo, Abia, Bayelsa, Cross River, Edo, and uh, on those states. Now, these states, you know, they are blessed with what? With um, lots of petroleum. And um, the first um, oil well in Nigeria was actually sunk in Oloi Biri. So take note about that the first oil well in the Niger Delta, that was in Oloibiri. Now, and also in Nigeria, we basically have three refineries. We have what? Three refineries, though not functional, but the refineries are the Port Harcourt refinery in um, Alessa, Elemi. We have the Wari refinery, and we also have the Kaduna refinery. And um, the process, um, by which petroleum is gotten from is referred to as fractional distillation. It's called what? Fractional what? Distillation. And in fractional distillation, what they usually do is that they separate the um, mixtures of petroleum based on their 
temperature. So at a certain temperature, we get kerosene. At a certain temperature, we get petrol. At a certain temperature, we get um, bitumen. At a certain temperature, we get diesel. So at different temperatures, you know, in the fractionating um, tower, different products of petroleum is being what realized. So that's how um, petroleum is what is processed. Now, in the refinery, you know, we have what we call the um, fractionating um, tower, you know, and um, petroleum is first of all drilled from the earth, you know, via um, drilling. And one thing about it is that we use complex um, equipment, you know, in the um, refinery. They use complex equipment to, uh, to drill out this oil from the ground through the hole, you know, down to a reservoir where it can be channeled to the refineries. And a good uh, um, illustration of what um, the mining looks like is what is just similar to what we have here on the screen. So the petroleum is being um, drilled and channeled down to this place, which we call the what the refiner. As you can see here, this is, um, this is a, a, a petroleum tower, and this is the flaring of gas from this other tower, and this is just a petroleum station we have here. So let's look at the second mineral resource. The second mineral resource is actually called coal. And um, coal is available in Nigeria and actually mined in a place called Enugu State in Nigeria. So the only coal mine we actually have in Nigeria and also in West Africa. And the, the, the coal we have is actually gotten from two um, methods. The first method is called the underground method or the added method or the shaft method. Now, for the underground method of mining coal, what they do is that a, a tunnel is actually drilled into the coal seam on the ground. They make a tunnel on the ground. And when they get there, they use um, explosives to, what, to break the coal seam. So they throw in things like dynamite and any form of explosive to, what, to you know, break the coal seam and bring it into what into smaller pieces from there they can what they can now extract the coal then the second um, method of mining coal is called the open cast method now for the open cast method you know the first of all remove the overboarding you know to expose the coal seam below they remove the overboarding now when the coal seam is now exposed it is then extracted out now what they basically do is that they use light rails, you know, to transport the coal that, you know, that is mined to the surface for consumption. So if you've been to a coal mine, you see that uh, places where they use the open cast method, they have what? They have rails to transport it below, down to what? Down to the surface where they can now carry out further purification process. Now, the, 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 the next... Um, mineral resource we can find in Nigeria is iron. Now, iron is actually gotten from its ore, and the iron ore deposits, you know, we have in Nigeria can be found in Itakwe, and Itakwe is in Kogi State, and we also can find it in Alaja, you know, in Delta State, somewhere close to Wari. And the method we use for mining iron ore is called the open cast mining. It's called the what? The open cast mining. And the open cast mining has to do with first um, scraping out the overboarding. So they, what they do is that they use um, excavators to, you know, wipe off or remove the overboarding, you know, covering the, co um, the iron ore. And once that is done, the iron ore will be what? Will be exposed, you know. And once it's exposed, they use explosives to break the iron ore into smaller fragments, and it can be, it, it's, it's quite similar to that of what? That of the um, coal. Now, when they break down the iron ore into smaller pieces, they now what? They extract this um, iron ore and they carry out further what? Purification, purification process to get out their what? Pig and rot iron that can be used for uh, everyday um, use. 
So this is a typical example of what an iron ore looks like, as you can see, and it can be transformed into making things like this, which is um, um, a nail, you know, for construction. And also it can be used to make a huge amount of iron that we can use for construction purposes. So let's look at the importance of minerals in Nigeria. What's the importance of minerals a resource in Nigeria? Now, minerals, you know, you know, can provide jobs for us. You know, so people earn a lot. They earn a, a huge amount of money by just what engaging in things like mining. You see miners and you see oil rig workers. You know, they make money from what from the process of mining. And also, these mined minerals can provide raw materials needed for industries. You know, raw materials like iron, raw materials like steel, raw materials like cement, you know, that is gotten from limestone can also be what be um, used for ind industrial use. So raw materials is a very good importance for what? For minerals. And the next importance of minerals is that this, uh, when, when, when we export these um, minerals, you know, we get what foreign exchange for the government. So a good example is Nigeria. If you look at our government, we export the crude oil, you know, that is being um, drilled out from our earth, and we sell it and make what and make foreign exchange from it. And also the revenue from these mineral funds, you know, funds infrastructures like. Um, roads, water, and what, and electricity. So it is from this um, money gotten by the government that they can what, they can create a budget for, you know, road, um, water, and what, electricity for the people. And the next um, importance of mineral is that mineral mining promotes industrial growth and also leads to training or and what and scholarship now a good example is um you, you see companies like shell you see companies like chevron you see companies like ajip you know these companies they are here in nigeria because of the presence of what of the mineral which is crude oil and as a result of that there is industrial growth, uh, growth and there is also you know free scholarships and training given to citizens you know in order for them to learn more about how what how to you know process and what and use these minerals then the next importance of minerals is that the income you know helps to develop a community and also helps to what to create social amenities that's why you see in places where these uh, minerals are found there is a good amount of what development coming into such a particular location and also social amenities being made available for people around such a particular location then the next um, importance of mineral is that mineral exp um, exploration produces geological maps so if there is no mineral you know to be explored there is, there is no way we can have a, what, a geological map you know, of Nigeria, of the Earth's surface, or any part of the world. So it helps to, uh, to produce geological map. Now, what are the problems you know, associated with mineral exploitation in Nigeria? Now, the first um, problem is what? Inadequate skilled labor. Now, the thing is this, to, you know, to explore these minerals and to um, extract and process them requires a large you know amount of skills so the problem in nigeria is that we have cases where the working population you know is not skilled enough to engage you know in this exploration and what exploitation and also the next problem of um, mineral exploitation in nigeria is environmental pollution you know these minerals when they are being um, exploited or they are being explored they they, they tend to what, damage the environment during the what, the process a good example is things like oil spillage you know air um, pollution due to gas flaring you know destruction of farmlands destruction of the aquatic habitats owing to the fact that chemicals is being discharged into the water body and all of this. You know, these problems, they actually what 
destroy our, what, our ecosystem. And as a result of that, we have things like loss of plants and loss of what, of animals. A good example I witnessed once was why I was traveling to Lagos. I realized a particular um, place, you know, in River State, you know, being what, being messed up with crude oil. Now, what happened was that the, the crude oil activities, you know, going on there, you know, we had oil spillage and the oil spilled into the farmlands around such a particular place and destroyed all the crops in that place. So this, um, this um, wrong um, exploration can affect our plants and can also affect the animals around such a particular place. And also, the next problem of uh, mineral exploitation is that there is always price instability in the work market. You know, you, you have cases where there's a fluctuation in the price of crude oil, that's, um, people, the demand is low, the demand is high, the, there, there's no demand at all, you know, or there's um, a conflict or disagreement in the price structure. You know, we have cases like this, and um, this is also a problem that has been affecting um, mineral exploitation in Nigeria. Then we also have cases of conflict between communities. You know, we have uh, uh, two co uh, communities, you know, fighting for a particular land that is rich in mineral, a particular land that is rich in gold, a particular land that is rich in crude oil, you know, they fight and they kill themselves because of what? Because of this. And also we, ha we have cases where there are conflicts between the community and the company coming to what? To exploit these minerals. Then we also have cases like oil bunkering, cases like smuggling, and cases like pipeline vandalism. These are uh, problems that, you know, that hampers uh, mineral exploitation in Nigeria, especially the Niger Delta region of Nigeria. Then we have the issue of environmental degradation, you know, and also shortage of farmlands. You know, one thing about this um, um, exploitation is that at the end of the day, our ecosystem will be badly affected owing to the fact that the environment is not put into consideration first why the process of mineral um, exploration is what is going on. And then we also have issues of inadequate capital, you know, money to, you know, fund um, the building of industries that will mine, building of industries that will process this um, resource and the money to fund, you know, its availability, you know, is also a problem that is affecting mineral exploitation in what in Nigeria. Then we have cases of oil spillage. You know, and this oil spillage can what can cause destruction of our farmlands. Then we have mining hazards, and we are a situation where we have collapse of mines. You know, you see a, a, a people in, in a particular place where mining is going on, and all of a sudden we we hear a case of what a, a mine collapse, and all the mine workers are dead or they, they go what they go missing. So these are some problems linked with mineral exploitation. And we also have issues of depletion of reserve, uh, crude oil reserve, uh, iron oil reserve, uh, coal reserve. You know, we have cases where they get what depleted. And also poor, you know, transportation network, inadequate spare parts, deforestation and soil erosion. They are all what problems, you know, hampering mineral resource or min mineral uh, exploitation in, in Nigeria. Then let's look at the second um, resource, which is called the power world resources in Nigeria. Now, in Nigeria, you know, power production can be in the, in the following form. It can be in terms of um, petroleum and natural gas. So what, what it means is that we can get power, you know, power source from what? From petroleum and natural gas. Now, uh, let's look at a, a, a good example of the petroleum products that can give us um, this power. We have things like petrol, diesel, kerosene, and grease for industrial and domestic use. Now, all of these things, they use them to create, uh, they use them to power engines, you know, that can work, that can generate electricity. Now, let's look at the LNG um, plant in Borni, in River State. Now, you see that in the LNG plants that we have in Borni there, you see that natural gas is converted to liquefied natural gas. 
And in that um, island in River State, you see that the people actually use electricity or gotten from what? From natural gas. Then um, power can as well be derived from hydroelectric what? power. Hydroelectric power. Now, what um, the hydroelectric power functions on? It functions on the creation of what? Dam. So when we actually make a dam, and um, we use the force, you know, obtained from the water in the dam to power, you know, turbines. You know, that can as well what, generate electricity. And the largest um, dam we have in Nigeria is the Kainji Dam along River Niger, close to New Busa. Now, other um, dams we have in Nigeria include the Shiroro Dam on River Kaduna, and we also have the Jeba Dam in Kwara states, you know, along the course of River Niger. So hydroelectric power is gotten from dams, and these dams, they are actually an artificial lake, and they can be used to what? Generate electricity. In fact, it is the most um, common, or let's say the commonest uh, form of electricity supply we have in what? In Nigeria. Now, let's look at a good illustration. Now, as you can see, the first um, image here shows what shows petroleum. You know how we get um, electricity from what from petroleum. You see things like um, natural gas. You know things like petrol, diesel, and the rest. They all get it from this means, and they use it to what to power a particular place in terms of electricity. Then the second image shows a dam. A dam is simply an artificial lake. You know, made by creating barrier across the face of the river. So when you do such, the water that is being discharged at the top of the dam, you know, at the peak point of the dam, will come with such an enormous force that can what that can power turbine. And when it does so, we have what electricity being generated for the entire population. Then let's talk about the third power resource in Nigeria. So the third one is called the thermal power stations. In Nigeria, we actually have different thermal power stations, and these power stations, you know, they make use of natural gas, they make use of petroleum to what to work, and they also make use of fuel, you know, just like the one we have in Anambra State. Now, what are the various um, power stations we have in Nigeria? Now, we have one power station in Lagos State, a, a place called Igbin in Lagos State, and um, the power station in Igbin in Lagos State actually uses what petroleum. Then also in Lagos, we have the Ijora Thermal Power Station, and it also uses petroleum. Then in Delta States, Sapele to be precise, the Sapele uh, Thermal Power Station, you know, makes use of what? Of natural gas, as well as the, um, the Thermal Power Station in Afam in Port Harcourt. Then we also have um, a Thermal Power Station in Oji River, in Anambra State, which uses what? The coal as its what? Fuel. And the image here shows a typical example of a thermal power station and how it, what it looks like. Now, what are the factors, you know, that can affect, um, what are the importance of what? Of thermal, of um, power resource. Now, dams generate electricity and also the you know, we also get revenue, you know, by exporting electricity to our neighboring countries like Niger Republic, like um, Benin Republic, like Cameroon. And also, these dams, like the um, Kainji Dam and the rest, they serve as what? As tourist um, attraction and recreation centers. And they also provide water for human consumption, you know, and also for industrial use, the water gotten from these um, places. And they also use them for agriculture and transportation. Also, dams promote irrigation farming when, you know, their water is being stored somewhere. And they help to control flooding, just as we have in Niger State and we have in Kogi State. And also, dams provide employment and income, you know, that can fund infrastructural development and new towns. And also, the water that we have in these places can as well support fishing activities. Now, what are the problems of dams in Nigeria. What are the problems of dams in Nigeria? Now, the first problem of dam in Nigeria is the problem of what? 
inadequate skilled manpower. You know, we, we lack the, you know, the manpower to, you know, create such things. We lack the expertise to manage them. We lack the expertise to run them on a day-to-day -day basis. That's why we make use of what, of the effort from the Western and the Eastern world for it. Then we also have issues of low level of what, technology. Uh, technological advancement is, so, is not enough to what, to match the requirements you know, in making um, these dams available and also to make them what work for us. Then we have issues where sometimes there can be seasonal um, river volume fluct uh, fluctuations, you know, water going up, water coming down. Sometimes during the year, the volume of water is less and sometimes during the year when we have a higher volume of water, you know, we've had issues like this. And we also have um, issues of aquatic weeds, you know, growing in these um, places. And we have sandbars and spits, you know, in river channel, you know, obstructing the flow of water. These are also what's the problems too. And another problem of dam in Nigeria is the lack of capital for construction and maintenance. Not having enough money, not having enough budget to, or to finance um, construction and maintenance of dams in Nigeria. So this is another what's problem. And the next um, problem is um, the silting of channels by sediments. You know, most times uh, water channels, you know, will be impeded with a lot, with lots of sediments, will be impeded with lots of uh, debris that can affect the flow of water. Then we also have cases where people are being displaced from their homes, you know, due to dam construction. You know, when uh, the, the uh, issues coming out from the dam will cause people to, uh, to move out due to things like uh, flooding, you know, things like collapse of dam and um, loss of um, residential areas and farmlands. You know, these um, things can cause people to, uh, to move out of that particular location. Then we have cases where our farmlands will be no more. You know, owing to the fact that they've been flooded, owing uh, they, they've been flooded from the collapse of dams, the, the the land for agriculture is no more there because they've been covered with water, and you know all of this can as well what affect you know the condition of life in such a particular place. Then we we have issues of loss of lives and loss of properties. You know, if a dam should collapse and we have excess flooding. You see that lives will be lost and properties will be lost also in the process. A good example is the um, the flooding issue in Nigeria as at last year. You see that so many houses, so many properties, and so many lives were what were lost in the process. So these are the problems of what of dams in Nigeria. Now let's talk about water resource. Now the next resource is what is water resource. Now, water resource refer to the useful things or materials that we can actually find inside water that are beneficial to human beings, beneficial to plants, and also beneficial to animals. Now, let's look at um, the various water sources that we have. Now, in the source of water in Nigeria, we have things like what? Like the rivers, the lakes, the ocean sea, and what? And spring, we have wells, we have boreholes, we have dams, canals, ponds, rain, etc. So these are um, water sources that we can find in Nigeria. So what's the importance of these um, water resources? Now the first importance is that water is used for domestic and what and industrial purposes. And also these rivers, these lakes we have, and even the ocean that we have close to the southern part of Nigeria can also provide what. Um, recreation and what and tourism. You have people going on a cruise vacation, you know, with a very big ship on this ocean. You have people, you know, traveling via rivers just to have fun, you know, go visit a particular place where we have a lake just for what recreation and what and tourism purpose. And also, the bodies of water contain mineral deposits. In these water bodies, we have different words, aquatic mineral deposits that are found there. Things like crude oil, you know, that can be drilled from beneath the water, the water bodies. Then we also have um, salt gotten from, you know, the ocean, you know, and also the estuaries. 
Also, water enables transportation. Um, that's to say that we, we can you know, move from one place to another by what? By the use of sheep, by the use of canoe, boats, and the rest. So without water, there will be no water transport. And also, irrigation and agriculture, they also depend on what? On water. Because if there is no water body like a river, lake, you know, to provide the water, there will be no irrigation. And most times, agricultural activities would not strive well, especially if we don't have a sufficient amount of rainfall. And things like um, fish, prawn, crayfish, and other um, aquatic foods, they actually come from what? From water body. So we get things like fish from the water body, we get things like prawn, we get things like oysters, periwinkle, and the rest, you know, that we use for food. And um, the next thing we should know is that water resources can be classified under uh, two headings, which is um, surface water and also underground water. So we have the surface water and what? The underground water. So the surface water can be rivers, ocean, lakes. Then underground water, you know, has to do with what? The um, well, aquifer, and the rest that we have. So um, let's look at the problems with water resources. Now, the first problem is the high cost of water treatment. You know, we spend so much treating water so that water can be used for our daily use. Then we also have cases where we have um, inadequate fresh water for domestic use. Then we have inadequate fresh water for industrial use. Then we have um, water pollution from oil spills, from chemical discharge and industrial effluents. We also have um, destruction of aquatic life and biodiversity from owing to the fact that chemical is the, a chem, a chemicals are discharged to water bodies and also oil spilled on water bodies. So the aquatic life, you know, is lost in the process. Then we have scarcity of marine foods, you know, owing to the owing to excess exploitation or what or destruction of aquatic bodies. And sometimes we have unemployment among fishermen and people whose livelihood depends on what on the water bodies. Now let's go to um, solar energy. Though the thing about solar energy is that um, this energy is gotten from the sun, you know, when we harness the power of the sun to generate electricity. But the thing about Nigeria is that we have not fully utilized our solar, you know, energy, you know, availability. And that's due to several reasons or due to different reasons. Now the, the first reason is lack of technical expertise in harnessing and storing solar power. Then also we have um, insufficient capital to acquire equipment, you know, to generate more electricity from solar energy. And we have shortage of skilled manpower. We have high cost of harnessing and maintenance. And we also have unreliability, you know, due to intermittent sunshine, especially in the periods where, you know, we have excess rainfall. You know, the level of sunshine will, what, will drop drastically owing to the clouds. Then we also have the fear of competition with conventional power source, like the hydroelectric power and what, and the power gotten from the petroleum. So these are the problems that, you know, hampers the um, usage of solar energy in Nigeria. Now let's talk about the next one, which is vegetation resources. So anything that can be obtained from trees, plants, and forests, you know, for the benefit of human beings and other living things is actually a vegetation resource. Now, um, the components of vegetation resource, you know, in, ve in the vegetation resource, we have things like um, roots, timbers, leaves, latex, bags, fruits, fibers, you know, even the wildlife, the firewood, the plants, litter, you know, all of these are, what are things that, you know, uh, uh, that make up the vegetation world resource. These are the things that when we get from the um, vegetational zone, we use it to work to better ourselves. So let's um, look at the importance of vegetation resource. Now, one importance is that the timber, you know, that we get from this forest, they can be used for furniture, construction, and building of houses. And also leaves and grasses, they provide pasture for what? For animals, especially what? The herbivores. And also these trees and grasses, you know, they can be used as firewood or fuel, especially when they are what? They are decayed. Plants, roots, leaves, barks, they use them for what? For medicine, be it in the traditional medicine or what? 
or the modern day medicine. And also forests can be used for tourist centers. They can be used as tourist world centers. You know, people go there for camping, hunting, research, and the rest. A good example is the Ubud, um, Yankari Game Reserve, you know, and also the forest in the world in the eastern part of Nigeria. So people just go there to what, to carry out research and also for camping and hunting. And also the leaf litter, when, once they decay, they can be used as what, as compost manure. And as well, paper production, you know, pulp and the rest, they make them from the use of what, the use of trees. So things like melina, you know, can be used, converted into what, into paper or tissue that we use for our everyday use. And also, vegetation helps to protect the earth against erosion. They help to protect the earth against what? Erosion by covering the surface of the soil. And also, uh, forests we have around us can provide what? Employment. Example, people going into lumbering, people that, who, people who specializes in felling of trees, people who, you know, are forest guards, you know, they earn their um, livelihood from what? from the forest so it provides what employment now what are the problems with um, the exploitation of vegetational resources now the first one is that it leads to what deforestation and soil erosion exploiting our forests will cause deforestation and will cause what exploitation um, and soil erosion now the next thing is that the um, vegetational resource when we exploit them it can cause what depletion of natural forest products especially the wildlife and it can lead to flooding you know when you carry out things like cutting down of trees you know and the rest we will end up having what issues of flooding and the fourth one is that it causes disappearance and extinction of wildlife and plant species you know consistent you know destruction and um, hunting of um, wildlife and also destruction of plant species can cause them to go what extinct and they will never exist again and also exploitation of vegetational resource can lead to depletion of vegetation what cover that can cause soil leaching and can as well cause what soil erosion and also there's a problem of transportation of timber you know from the forest at high cost so during um lumbering you know most times people spend more or companies they spend more towards to transport these um trees down to the what the sawmill where they carry out what further usage and this is sometimes a what a problem in what in vegetation resource now what's the importance of resources in nigeria why is resource you know important to nigeria now the first one let's look at um tin we use tin for what for coating containers and for canning all of those canned foods you buy in the supermarket they are what they are made from tin you know the containers are made from tin and also columbite combined with steel can be used to manufacture um, engines jets and rockets and also this tin and columbite when you export them you get what foreign exchange then the iron that we extract is used in construction you know we use to construct things when strength is needed like bridges like houses and what and other um, structures then limestone is used to manufacture what cement and these minerals, they provide the government with foreign exchange earning, and they also create employment opportunities. And as well, the revenue that the government and individuals they get from this, they use it towards to develop the infrastructures available and also to um, increase the what, the amenities present in a particular place. And also, these uh, mineral resources they provide what raw materials for industrial use, and they help to also generate power that we can use for our day-to-day -day activities. Things like coal, gas, oil, firewood, they are what they are sources of power and they are mineral and they are resources that we have in Nigeria. And also when we sell these resource um, these uh, resources will help to uh, to promote our standard of living and also it will help us to develop our skills and also our technology. So quickly let's um, go to the exam guide and let's just pick up a question and what and attempt it. So we are going to look at um, 2011. Now let's um, let's go to um, question number eight. Question number eight of the exam guide.
Now, we are here in question number eight. And the question says, um, name the types of power derived from each of the following sources. Now, the first one is what? Is water. Now, what is the power that we get from what? From water. Now, this is basically what? Uh, from water, we get hydroelectric water power, which can be used for what? For generating electricity. So, water gives us hydroelectric power, which is used to generate what? Electricity for our daily use. Then um, we have the next one as what? As coal. Coal. What do we use coal for? Coal is used for um, thermal power stations. You know, thermal power stations, they make use of what? Of coal to generate power. So that's for what? For coal. So that is the power generated, thermal power, thermal power. Then we also have natural gas. Natural what? Gas. Now, for natural gas, we also use it for what? For thermal what? Thermal power um, um, this in stations. So you see that places like Afam, you know, they use what? They use thermal what? And they use they use natural gas for what? For thermal station. So then the sun has to do with what? Solar what? The solar power. The solar power. Now. So we've seen the first one as water, hydroelectric power. The second one is coal. Coal gives us thermal power. Natural gas also for thermal power. And then um, the next question says, um, write explanatory notes on the type of power obtained from water and sun under the following heading, specific place of production. Now for um, water, specific place of production, you know, we get hydroelectric power and it's gotten from the Kanji Dam the Jeba Dam and the Watch Shirovo Dam. So those places are in along River Niger and and also in um, Kwara State and also in River Kaduna in Kaduna State. So that's for the um, for the um, hydroelectric power. Then for the sun, it's available everywhere, you know, and we obtain it by what by using the solar panel. So with that, we've come to the end of this class and. Um, Thank you for staying with us till this moment. See you later.